it is impossible to talk about Bjarnerf Strustrup without talking about C++. And I love C++. Why do I love it? Why do I think it is so wonderful? There are three main reasons for that. And the primary reason for which I love C++ is that it is a language which allows me to see bits. It allows me to see sequences of zeros and ones in the computer, which is the best, the most universal way to represent the reality. And it is so sad that many people consider this representation something as a low-level thing. It isn't. After all, the binary numbers as a universal way of encoding reality were first suggested by Leibniz, hardly a low-level person. It was introduced as the foundation of computing by, by, by Alan Turing. And we should not be ashamed of bits. We should be proud of them. We should view our activity of encoding reality into bits as a glorious activity. The second property of C++, which I love, is that it allows me to talk about addresses of these bit sequences. That was the second fundamental idea behind modern computers. First was the binary memory introduced by Turing. But it was a bit complicated. It required linear access to get to a particular bit sequence. The random access memory, which one could argue was introduced by von Neumann, uses a bit sequence as an address which allows you to get to its value. This ability to deal with addresses is a remarkable property which allows us to implement all kinds of complicated data structures to represent whatever parts of reality we're dealing with. The third remarkable property of C++ is its ability to take these bit sequences and provide them with abstract semantics to map these bit sequences onto however advanced abstractions which we could borrow from mathematics or develop ourselves. When Bjarne started designing C++ at the end of the 70s and 1979, uh, he quickly articulated his fundamental design goal, design goal of remaining faithful to the machine, allowing people to use his language without paying for the features they do not need and eliminating as much as possible the cost of abstraction. So these research goals he combined with gradually incorporating more and more mechanisms for expressing modern abstractions. C++ evolved to a point where we could both talk about low level representation of our data structures, about bit positioning in memory, and about addresses in the data structure and at the same time using advanced algebraic concepts such as, say, semi-groups. During this long path, Bjarne was very unwavering, very resolute to preserve his fundamental goals. I remember when I joined C++ community in the mid-80s, people were telling Bjarne, clever people, that you should turn C++ into fully object-oriented language, make 
it automatically garbage collectible, make all the uh, member functions virtual, eliminate global functions. In other words, they wanted, them, they wanted him to design Java. He resisted. He listened politely to them, to me, to other people throughout this lengthy period of time and kept working, maintaining the fundamental integrity of the language. It became a remarkable tool, at least I find it so. Hopefully, since you are here listening to, the, to me now, you also find it a remarkable tool. Is he done with the language? No. I mean, the design is going and going and going. And that, from my point of view, actually proves its greatness. The fact that the path is open, there are many other things to do, that C++ is a language which could be developed further, shows us that it is a language with the future. Many years from now, it will become so much better even than what it is right now. And for that, I'm very grateful to its designer, a great computer scientist, Jarnus Trustrup.